I've, I've loved writing this show. I have genuinely fucking loved writing the show. Like I said, I wanted to write a show about sort of like embracing my flaws and finding my confidence. And I think slowly but surely, I've sort of managed to piece it together from writing this, from being like, yeah, I like to swear. Doesn't mean I'm a bad person. I get drunk and I make a tit of myself. Doesn't mean I'm a bad person. I throw up in public. That does mean I'm a bad person. <laughs> but I dealt with it. It's fine. I can shrug it off. I can laugh it off. It's OK. I'm not a, I'm not a bad person. I'm slowly piecing all this confidence together like a little armour. And I'm doing all these Edinburgh previews of this show. And I, I felt like a liar because I was like, I feel a bit more confident, but I don't feel... I don't feel right. I don't feel 100%. There's something missing and I don't know what. And I started listening to them all back and I realised, I've said it a lot of times tonight, I catch myself doing it now, how many times I said, I'm just not comfortable in my own skin. I'm just not comfortable in my own skin. I was like, Aaron Patterson, you are wondering why you're so insecure and why you're so uncomfortable in your own skin and it's because you're not comfortable in your own skin. It's quite simple, that. That is what's causing all your insecurities. That's what makes you feel awkward. And I'll explain it a little bit more. I've got this thing called psoriasis. Do you know what it is? Yeah, I'm going to give you... Normally, at this point, I will give full disclosure. Uh, I wear a crop top deliberately so you can see it. Um, it was a lot worse than this. Then I went to Edinburgh, started doing really fucking well, and it disappeared. I was fucking raging. <laughs> Absolutely. I've had this since I was seven years old. I'm 23. It was so, so bad. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it on stage. I'm going to embrace my dodgy skin, my broken immune system. I'm going to stand on stage. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to talk about it. And my skin went, see you later. <laughs> We're going to make you look a fucking liar. <laughs> And this is genuinely the best my skin has been since I was about seven years old. Um, so the people at the front can probably see, um, like, it's like these, like patches. My little, little red patches. Also, I can see some of you looking terrified. It's not contagious. <laughs> it's not. You can't catch it. All it is, is your body makes um, new skin cells every three to five weeks. That's how long it takes you. But I do it in three to five days for no other reason than I'm a fucking champion. That is why. <laughs> and that is it. I've all been so embarrassed by it. But I think the reason I've been embarrassed by it there's other people have made me feel embarrassed by it. Um, girls, when I was younger, would ask if I'd been in a fire. Like when I was getting changed at school, but you'd been in a fire. Is that what's happened to you? Have you been in a fire? And when you're aware that people are staring at it and that people can notice it, it makes you feel so paranoid. And I absolutely hated it. Lads wouldn't go near us because lads thought I had something. A girl at uni started a rumour that she's got it because she's dirty. She's got it because she doesn't wash. And it's awful to know that people are talking about it. And I thought, well, you know what it is? If this is what's making me so like, insecure, if this is what's making me so uncomfortable, there's tiny little patches on my skin, I want to feel good about it, because I'm stuck with it. I'm stuck with it. It's not going anywhere. It's a bit like Katie Hopkins. I've just got to accept it. <laughs> I was like, so I need to feel good about it. I need to be able to embrace this, because then if someone's a dick to me about it, I won't give a shit. If I'm fine about it, no one can hurt my feelings about it. So I looked in the mirror, and I looked all over my tummy, and these little patches, I looked on my legs, I looked on my arms, and I was like, you know what I've got? All over my body. I don't know why I'm so embarrassed or why I'm so ashamed, because all I've got is fucking leopard print. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why a leopard never changes their spots, don't you? Because you can fucking rip a man apart, that's why. <laughs> and I felt so good. So, so good. It felt like something had just clicked into place. And I was like, that's it. That's why you feel so uncomfortable and you want to hide yourself away because you literally want to hide yourself away. So I went downstairs to the lads and I was like, I want to go out. I want to go on a night out. I want to go for a drink. I want to let my hair down. And they were like, all right, should we, should we take you out? And I was like, yeah, it's exactly what I want. And we went out. We went drinking. We went dancing. I was having the best night. I was having such a good time. And I think it's because finally I felt a little bit more comfortable just being me. So I could fully just like let myself go and didn't really give a shit. So fuck if someone's looking at us. Don't care. And I'm having a really good dance. And then I spotted a lad at the bar. I was like, fuck it. Literally. <laughs> fuck it. I won't talk to him. So I went up to him and I went, this might be really weird. Um, I don't know if I'm meant to do this, but I think you're really fit. Can I buy you a drink? I had never done this before. I've never made the first move, never chatted to someone else. I'm freaking out. And he went, I was just about to say the same thing to you. I was like, Lauren Patterson, where has this confidence come from? Strong female empowerment. That's where my flatmates did say that in hindsight, it could be the line of coke I had in the taxi, but I like to think. <laughs> strong female empowerment. And I'm dancing 
with this lad and drinking with this lad. And it's the first time I have felt comfortable. First time I have felt comfortable with someone of the opposite sex in the best part of 18 months. And I'm having a brilliant time. We're drinking, we're dancing about two o'clock in the morning. My flatmates have left. And I was like, oh, I should probably go. And he went, oh, I was wondering, maybe, could I come back with you? I was genuinely gobsmacked. I was like, oh my God, it's worked. It's actually worked. And I think he mistook my hesitance for like wanting to say no. And he went, I really don't want to pressure you. It's absolutely fine. Please, please, please don't feel pressured. I went, hey. <laughs> I booked an Uber like three minutes ago, mate. Tarek's outside in a Honda. <laughs> are you in or are you out? Are you coming? <laughs> And he came back with us, and I felt so empowered. I felt so confident. I thought, I've done this. I've done this. This is brilliant. We got back to mine. We went upstairs. I took my top off, and he just stared at us. I went, you're right. He went, what the fuck is that? And he's just pointing at us. And I'm so drunk and so giddy. I was like, what's the matter? He went, what the fuck is that? Can I catch that? And I didn't know what he was on about. I was like, little tits, though. <laughs> <laughs> You can hold them very dearly, but you can't catch them. No, it's not. And he went, I'm not fucking about. What's that on your skin? I couldn't see it in the dark, in the club. What is that? Can I catch it? And I told you, I've spent ages building this armor up. And if he'd said that to me a month ago, or a week ago, a day ago, I would have cried. That is my biggest insecurity, and he's called me out on it to my face. But I thought, nah, I could feel this bullet coming towards us. And I was like, let it bounce off. Let it bounce off. Do not let this prick hurt you. And I went, nah. No, you cannot catch it. It's not contagious. He went, that's all right. I can still fuck you then. <laughs> I thought, who the fuck do you think you are to talk to me like that? Just for the record, I can see your willy. <laughs> he is sat on my bed with his little willy just hanging out. I did ask if we had smaller microphones, but don't, so... <laughs> this is generous. That's all I'm saying. And he sat there looking dead smug. I just thought, who the fuck do you think you are to talk to me like that, to try and make me feel any less wonderful than what I am? I can fully see your willy, and I paid a 1.8 surcharge to bring you home in an Uber. <laughs> I want you to put your hand on your heart, look me in the eye, and swear on your mother's fucking life that your dick is worth 1.8 times the average Uber fare. Because <laughs> if that is the ride I'm getting, I would much prefer to fucking walk, sunshine. <laughs> Yeah. I wish I'd said that, but I shagged him anyway because I'm not a quitter. Um, yeah.